Shumai, um, today we're going to have a look at blackthorn. You know that it's got Latin name, I would say that, and it's Prunus spinosa, or in Welsh, uh, drain and the. Um, it's a small tree or a shrubby kind of tree native to Britain. It grows along woodland edges or in hedgerows, and that's why I'm here. There's some in the hedge here and some of the, the large ones at the back. It's a very thorny tree. Um, and it reaches about nine meters um, and it can grow to quite an age because it gets cut down a lot and, and it suckers, which means that it will grow up, um, it'll spread across the ground and grow up and it'll send up new shoots in, uh, away from the, the parent plant. Um, and it's for this reason that it's called Mère du Bois in France, um, and that means mother of the wood. And it's because it will send up these suckers and it will create a thicket, a thicker area, um, and actually act as a nursery for other trees. So the thorns and the spines will protect other trees as they start to grow, um, and then obviously overtake these as they get larger and shade them out. The bark of blackthorn can appear incredibly dark. Um, and especially when contrasted against the white puffs of the flowers. Um, and that's where it takes its name from, blackthorn, because the, the bark looks so dark in contrast to those flowers. It's an incredibly spiky and thorny tree. Um, and actually there's so many flowers on this bit, it's very difficult to see the thorns, but you can see them in there. And I remember laying hedges uh, with my father um, and this was a fantastic hedging, hedging tree, blackthorn, but also one of the ones that's very spiky and you end up with quite sore spikes and thorns in you after, after being in contact with it. Um, but it, the good thing with it is because it's so spiky, it actually is a, it's a great protection for nesting birds. It, it, it's a bit of a deterrent for other things to attack the birds' nests because they're in amongst those spikes. In fact, there's a rare bird, the red-backed shrike, um, that will use the thorns and it will spike um, surplus food, so spare foods like insects, reptiles and amphibians on the thorns and save them for, for later so it becomes like a bit of a, a pantry or a larder to return to. One of the interesting things with the blackthorn is that the flowers and the blossom appear before the leaves um, and you can see them here and there, and people often confuse and mix up blackthorn with hawthorn. And actually in this hedge line here, there's quite a, quite a straightforward contrast in that this blackthorn already in blossom, and this hawthorn is coming into leaf now and the blossom is yet to, yet to arrive. It's these flowers that give rise to the much sought after slow berries. Um, that appear on the blackthorn. So these flowers will become, um, through, through the summer now and into October when they become ready, small bitter fruits. They're like a beautiful purpley black colour. Uh, they're very rich in vitamin C, but you, you couldn't eat them. They're just too bitter and they would pretty much dry your mouth out. Um, and they're collected by people to make um, different jellies and jams and alcohol, uh, slow gin, for example. Um, and they say it's best to wait till after the first frosts as the frost will um, soften the, the skins ready to be used. Blackthorn is considered a holy tree capable of warding off evil spells of witches and spirits. Um, but it's also associated with bad luck. People are afraid to bring a branch in bloom into the house. They believe that it would bring bad luck or even death. Um, and it's seen to represent this link between life and death. And I think the primary reason for this is during that early spring, these dark, dark branches that seem so lifeless um, and considered to be dead, um, suddenly become adorned and, and absolutely uh, festooned with um, this beautiful bright white blossom. And it's that contrast that between this appearing to be dead bark of the, of the blackthorn and the life of the, the white flowers, particularly as these flowers come before the leaves. The wood of the blackthorn tree is very hard um, and it doesn't grow massively big, but it is quite useful. Um, the bark has been used to make yellow dyes and wood turners like using the wood because it, it's got that beautiful 
beautiful colouring in, like a, a reddy heartwood and a yellowy sapwood. Um, it's been used, like I say, by wood turners for making uh, objects on their lathes. Um, it's been used for walking sticks. Um, in the old times, when rakes used to be made out of wood, it was made for rake teeth because the wood was hard. Um, and also in Ireland, um, and I, I can't quite say this properly, but shillelagh stick, which was um, a traditional Irish weapon for, for bonking things with, I guess. Um, and also the fruit and the bark, this, this dye that I said can be made from the bark, and also the fruit used to be used for writing inks. Blackthorn is very much an overlooked um, native British tree. Uh, the thorns put people off, the bitter slow berries put people off, but it's so, so important as a, as a hedgerow, um, as a, uh, a food for, for, um, for birds, and as a, as a habitat. Like I said, it's very, very spiky, so things will nest in it and be safe. So go out and have a look, be very careful of those spikes, um, and see if you can spot some, especially this time of year with its beautiful blossom before the hawthorn blossom comes out. Good luck.